Hi, this is Dr. Scott Jensen, and there's a lot of information that needs to be digested in, in the recent days and weeks, and that's why I wanted to come on board and do a Facebook Live presentation. I would start out by saying this. We've been played, all of us. They've done it to all of us. Let's start at the beginning. Yesterday, the U.S. Supreme Court rejected President Biden's mandate for vaccines for companies with more than 100 employees. This was basically a press conference on September 9th that President Biden utilized to try to do an end run around congressional action. There were a variety of district courts that weighed in on this mandate and rejected it. But as often is the case, the district courts, the circuit courts didn't all agree. So it ended up going to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, this is the Star Tribune from Minneapolis. The court rejects the one mandate, and that's the 100 employees or more with OSHA but it allows the healthcare workers in regards to the Medicare mandate. President Biden engaged in an unconstitutional act on September 9th, and the Supreme Court smacked him down. He doesn't get to do that. Let's move on. Let's go to Minnesota politics. The Department of Health, the commissioner, Jan Malcolm, their department decided that when it comes to treating sick COVID-19 patients and using monoclonal antibody infusions, what matters isn't the typical assessment of how sick is a patient, which is what us doctors do. We triage in the office, in the emergency room, in the ICU. But the Minnesota Department of Health Real said that no, the priority isn't how sick a person is, or even potentially how much benefit they might receive from the monoclonal antibodies, but instead race was a qualifier. So today, the Star Tribune reports that race has been dropped as a qualifier for monoclonal antibodies. Well, that's nice that it's been dropped, but that doesn't change the horror of the fact that the Minnesota Department of Health was willing to step in, tell hospitals, doctors, emergency room physicians, ICU intensivists, hospitalists, nurses, what they would do in terms of how they would triage who needs what. Third, we have hospitals around the nation and in Minnesota whose rigid protocols are harming patients. We literally have lawyers coming to the rescue so that a loved one may not be disconnected from a life-giving ventilator. Families and patients have been crushed by the rigid protocols that can hardly be justified by the science. And we have had lawyers and judges across the nation and in Minnesota have to step in, sometimes mandating that a treatment be allowed. When I was in the Senate for one term, we did have robust discussions regarding right to try. Now, generally, right to try legislation focused on investigational drugs that hadn't necessarily received FDA approval. But the spirit of right to try is being violated by many of the rigid hospital protocols. Next, health freedom. When Minnesota, the common question today is, where's Governor Tim Walz? Where is his voice? He had said vaccine mandates aren't a thing, but the mayors of Minneapolis and St. Paul, Jacob Fry and Melvin Carter, have come out and said, we're putting a vaccine passport mandate in place. What is that about? Well, this is what was said in the Star Trib by one writer. This is what 
This writer said, the overall restaurant industry has been decimated, and yet we have done everything asked of us. Take out only, capacity limitations, masks, shields, extra sanitation efforts, and so on. It's still that wasn't enough to not get singled out once again. There is no question this is going to cost more jobs, more bankruptcies, and more families wondering where the next paycheck is going to come from. You see in Minneapolis and St. Paul, if you want to go in for a beer or a meal, you've got to show your vaccine passport or that you've had a PCR test that was negative within the last 72 hours. But mind you, we've been having patients clogging up our emergency rooms requesting PCR tests. This mandate by these two mayors will make it more difficult because typically the PCR tests are taking 48 to 72 hours to come back. The antigen tests, the home tests, don't count. So all these folks who might be interested in getting a negative PCR test to validate that they can have a meal or a beer at a restaurant in Minneapolis and St. Paul won't be able to fill the bill most likely because of the time necessary to complete the test, or they're going to go clog up the emergency rooms, which is exactly what doctors and medical organizations have been pleading with people to not do. Let's move on. The COVID hospital miscounts. Well, recently we have seen CNN's Jake Tapper express dismay and disappointment that a young person going into a pediatric hospital with, say, a fractured leg or something such as this, who happens to, because of routine policy and protocol, positively test in the emergency room for COVID without any symptoms. And clearly that patient would not be in that emergency room were it not for the broken leg. Jake Tapper expressed dismay, saying, we cannot be counting that as a COVID admission. We saw something similar from the Manhattan, New York counts, where they demonstrated that in Manhattan, more than 50% of their COVID admissions had nothing to do with COVID. They were admitted with something different, but because of protocol, there may have been a positive test. The patient may have had mild flu or cold symptoms, or may have had no symptoms. And yet these were being reported as COVID admissions. Do you know that in the U.S. we do have a pandemic? We have a pandemic with violence. In America, a child is shot, shot every hour, every hour, and hundreds die. And yet we're seeing hospitals code admissions as COVID admissions, even though the patient was there because they had a broken leg. Let's move on. Let's go to the creme de la creme regarding misinformation. I've been accused of that. Fact of the matter is my license has been investigated five times. Misinformation, I've been told. Let's go to what the New York Times says today. David Leonhardt's article. He says this. Chief Justice Sonia Sotomayor noted this. Quote, we have over 100,000 children, which we've never had before, in serious condition, and many on ventilators. Mr. Leonhardt says this. That last sentence is simply untrue. PolitiFact called it way off. Daniel Dale of CNN wrote that Sotomayor had made a significant false claim. Glenn Kessler, the Washington Post's fact checker, called it wildly inaccurate. Excuse me, wildly incorrect. Fewer than 5,000 U.S. children were in the hospital with COVID last week. Mr. Leonhardt went on to say this. Over the past week, about 870 children were admitted to hospitals with COVID, according to the CDC. Lesson 875. 
less than a thousand, nowhere near a hundred thousand. Mr. Leonhardt went on to say this, by comparison, more than 5,000 children visit emergency rooms each week for sports injuries. 870 COVID patients, 5,000 children visit emergency rooms. As the Gallup poll last year wrote, Mr. Leonhardt included this sentence, Republicans consistently underestimate risks while Democrats consistently overestimate them. We get a report from Italy. This was a journalist asking Professor Anna Teresa Palomara, the Director of Infectious Diseases at the Italian Superior Institute of Health, but also a member of the scientific community of the Italian Pasteur Institute. They were asking her a question. Why so many cases of infections? What's going on? This is what Professor Palomara said. The first reason is that in Italy, as in other European countries, the variant is infecting mostly vaccinated people, and especially people vaccinated with three doses. Let's move on. What did the CDC say recently? about their death counts. They said that more than 75% of the COVID deaths did indeed have four or more significant comorbidities. Comorbidities that would put that patient at high risk of death from influenza this season or from COVID or from other respiratory cardiac maladies. Let's move on. In Germany, it was reported a couple of weeks ago that 96% of all Omicron cases occurred in the vaccinated. That was in Germany. Data from the Robert Cook Institute shows only 4% of Omicron cases came from the 30% of the country which was unvaccinated. What did Dr. Ehud Kimron, the leading Israeli immunologist, say in a letter to the Israeli Ministry of Health recently, a few days ago? He said, You do not admit it because you have admitted almost no mistake in the last two years. But in retrospect, it is clear that you have failed miserably in almost all of your actions. And even the media is already having a hard time covering your shame. He went on to say, you refused to adopt the Barrington Declaration signed by more than 60,000 scientists and medical professionals. You chose to ridicule, slander, distort, and discredit those authors. The truth is, you have brought the public's trust in you to an unprecedented low. He went on to say this, you made children feel guilty, scared, smoke, drink, get addicted, drop out, and quarrel, as school principals around the country attest. You branded without any scientific basis people who chose not to get vaccinated as enemies of the public and as spreaders of disease. We've got some... 270 doctors who've come out and called for Joe Rogan to be censored. I'm ashamed of those doctors. When I was a resident in medical school and as a resident in family practice, we would occasionally have grand rounds. Grand rounds were an intense discourse, exchanging ideas trying to identify with precision the diagnosis as well as the best treatment program. This was not a moment or a time for physicians and nurses and professors to stand around holding hands and celebrating some kumbaya moment. This was intensely debated. What was the diagnosis? What were the key elements in the history that drove the diagnosis? And what would we do to treat that patient? 
That's what we did. We did that with tumor conferences as well. I remember being at tumor conferences where an advocate of a given chemotherapy program would say, we need to treat this patient with this chemotherapy protocol because we can extend his life by 33%. And I piped up and asked, okay, 33%. How difficult will this chemotherapy regimen be for the patient to tolerate? And the speaker said, it'll be tough, but it'll be worth it. Who wouldn't go through almost anything to get 33% more life. So I asked the real question, without the treatment, what is this person's lifespan? There was a pause and this specialist looked at me and said, well, about six months. So I looked at this specialist and I said, okay, so this patient gets to go from six months to eight months of life and every month will be a living hell. While if we do nothing, Perhaps the patient might have three or four good months and then a couple months saying goodbyes and participating in a hospice program. These are the things that happen in medicine. Joe Rogan was doing nothing more than trying to put context into a very challenging situation. And we've got 270 doctors saying, censor him. I'm ashamed of those doctors. We've got the Minnesota Board of Medical Practice still challenging my license and investigating me. But this time, the fifth time, it has not been enough for me to respond and explain myself. This time, the Minnesota Board of Medical Practice has requested and demanded my patient's records if I treated them recently with ivermectin. I'm not even going to go into any articles or discourse regarding the potential benefits of pre-hospital therapeutics for COVID-19. This morning I had an 82-year-old fellow come in. He has been fully vaccinated against COVID and boosted. He has been vaccinated against influenza. His influenza A test is positive. His symptoms are consistent with influenza A. What does that mean? Well, it may mean that the flu shots this year aren't going to be as effective as we had hoped. It may mean that there could be patients that suffer from both the Omicron variant as well as influenza, even though they were fully vaccinated. We're just going to have to let the science breathe and watch the data come in. This week, my schedule didn't match up very well with Fox News and the Ingram angle, but they contacted me and they wanted me to appear on their show. And as I said, we couldn't work out the scheduling differences, but this is what they had said to me. They said, early on in the pandemic, you are a state senator from Minnesota who is also a doctor in the state. You talked about how you were seeing data pointing to inflated number of COVID cases and deaths being counted in hospitals. Those institutions might get more state and federal dollars if they classified more COVID. The medical bureaucracy came after you, even threatening to strip your medical license. Tonight, after state medical officials across the country are being forced to admit what basically I have said, I was to be there to respond. Here was my response to Fox News, and this is what I would have said had we been able to work out the schedules. It started with a willingness to corrupt data and deceive America. Money from the government was the grease to keep the fear mongers motivated. Exaggeration was the tool of the bureaucrats. Accusations and cancellations of doctors, scientists, and nurses were the stock and trade of media. Resistance was addressed through de-licensure and government strong-arming. Even as the facade of fiction crumbled, a willingness to deceive America remained. Americans must collectively demand accountability and audits in order to restore constitutional freedom. That's about all I have to report on this Friday, January 14th. But I would ask you, Do you remember the line to Mrs. Lincoln? Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was 
the play. So I would ask you, other than all that I've shared with you, how are you feeling about how you've been played? And I would leave you with words from Edmund Burke that went something like this. All that is necessary for evil to prevail is for good people to do nothing. When you're being played, I hope you don't choose to do nothing. Get off the damn sidelines and play ball. Thank you.